Hi people, my name is Jeff and today we're going to be showing you guys how to add a Linux based computer to a Microsoft Windows based domain. For this example, we will be using Windows Server 2019 running Active Directory. And on the Linux side, we will be using CentOS 8. Now, I'll have a document containing all the commands I'll be using for this linked down below in the description. If you want to use it, it is handily color coded with a legend for all the color coding down below. Right at the bottom of the document, read that first before you ask me any questions. Because that's what most of the questions will be about, I guess. So, now that, we're, now that that's out of the way, we can start off with our little tutorial. First of all, we need two things from our Windows domain controller. We need our domain name, which is example.local, and we need our IPv4 address, 192.168.112.10. Both of these can be different in your case, just make sure that you check what it is for you. From that point on, we can practically just go to Linux. Now, the first thing we have to do on Linux is to change our computer name. So we'll just click right up here in the top right corner, go to settings, go to details, and change the computer name. In my case, it'll be saying CentOS because I already changed it, but as long as it doesn't end in .local domain like it does on default, you'll be fine. After that, we have to go back to settings actually, because we need to go to Network settings, to wired, IPv4, and we're going to turn automatic DNS off. IPv4 method DHCP is perfectly fine to stay. And here we're going to be entering the IP address of our domain controller. This will allow our computer to translate the domain name to our domain controller and actually made the connection. So we're just going to press apply and that's everything we're going to be doing graphically. From now on everything's going to be command line because it's Linux. Just going to open the terminal and for this I am going to immediately go over to the root user by typing in su and su minus which will automatically translate to logging in as a root account. And a root account on Linux is the account that's practically allowed to do everything like the administrator account on Windows, but with even more privileges. So first of all, we're going to need to edit the text document. This we're going to be using nano and the text document we're going to be editing is going to be located in etc and it's going to be called resolve.conf This part will be replaced with our domain name in this in my case that's going to be example of local it might vary for your case but as for the name server we are going to change this dot 112.10 making this the same IP address as our domain controller. Press Control and X for exit. Asks us if we want to save changes. We want to do so, so we press Y. And we're going to just press Enter to write them back to the exact same file name. And that that's done, we can go on to our next command, which is going to be realm join. And realm join will allow us to join a realm, which is the Linux term for a domain. But we are going to have, no, wait, no, I do, I want to have join there. No idea why that disappeared. But for us to be able to join into a domain, we're going to have to specify a user that is used to log into the domain. In our case, that's going to be the good old administrator. 
and the administrator is going to log in to example dot local and if everything went correct and everything you've set up until now has been done correctly they'll ask you for the administrator password and this is going to be the administrator password for your windows domain controller that's entered correctly you won't get an output but we can always check if it went by correctly by just typing in realm list and as you can see, we're now part of example the local. Now, if I just type in ID and I want to get the ID for administrator, it's going to say it can't find administrator. Which is weird because we just logged into the domain with the administrator account. And that's because Linux at the moment is set up to only recognize that this is a domain user if we add example.local to the end of it. And then it'll give us our output. And this will get quite tedious if you have to be logging in all the time. So that's something we can change. So on our text file we have to edit. Two and this one is located again in etc. SSSD and SSSD.conf. And here we have to change two lines. Right here at the bottom, use fully qualified domain names. We are going to set to false with capital F. Something you have to be sure of. And we're going to be removing the at percent %d from the end of the I can't come to the name for it. Um, the second to last sentence, that's it. Again, we're going to press Ctrl X to leave the file. Yes, we want to save it. Yes, we want to keep that file name. We're going to quickly check if it was actually saved. Perfect. And now I can just type in uh, ID administrator. Oh, wait. Uh, one thing. Uh, I forgot one thing. You have to um, restart. SSSD with uh, system CTL. I, I have it in the document, I just completely forgot about it. So if we now ask ID administrator, it will just give us our entire string of numbers that I actually don't know what they really mean. <laughs> but when we get them, we know it works. That's the most important part. So, now we're just going to log out. And we're going to log in as another user, not listed. It's going to be administrator. Logging in with his domain password. And as you can see, we are able to just log right in. No problem. And to prove even further that everything works, I already prepared a user on the domain controller. That's called Bob. So we're just going to try and log in as Bob. Going to log out again. Log in as another user. Not listed, because it's Bob. And Bob will just login just like that and at this point they're practically done your sendus computer has been fully connected to the domain controller and if we go and look in computers 
it'll even show up right here with the computer name that we gave, which was CentOS. We'll be tied to fully in capitals because that's just how the main controller does it. So don't really worry about that. But I want to thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it worked for you, most importantly. Again, I'll have a document linked down below in the description that has all the commands I used in the correct order. It even has a system CTL, one that I forgot about. And it's completely color coded to what will be different for you and what you have to replace. So just go and check the legend about it all the way down at the bottom of the file. It's page three, it's not that far. <laughs> So thank you all for watching and see you guys next time. Bye for now.